What's up everybody and welcome to our garage. Uh, today, live action, Pete and I are gonna be prepping the 1103 machine for the upcoming more season. Obviously, as you can see, we got a new wrap, a um, couple new sponsors, and we're gonna be getting going on a prep. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing ball joints, tie rods, rebuilding the front shocks, clean out the inside of the car, and as we move to the rear end of the car, we're gonna be doing CVs, axles, bushings, bearings, uh, you name it, just going through it all. the short video before this is the parts we took off uh, the front end of this car starting with tie rods uh, steering dampener we got our spindles our upper and lower arms and uh, some fresh parts here ball joints brake pads these are just a couple of the items I want to go over with you on why we change them out uh, let's just start with the tie rods yes the play in them doesn't feel bad but they don't always just wear out. They end up shearing on you and you'll shear the stud right off of this thing. Um, steering dampener, after so much use, it starts to get a little bit of air in the system. You lose your dampen. We move over to the spindles. Um, these are German spindles, gusseted. What we're gonna do is clean them up and then crack check them with some spot checks. So always make sure the stuff's not cracked. When it comes to the ball joints, these just went through uh, the 2021 Mint 400. I mean, you can see how loose that is. Um, that's just what hard wear and tear will do to these things. But to explain a little bit in detail on the ball joints, a lot of guys ask me what ball joints I use. And I use Impy lowered ball joints. And what that means by lowered is the bevel inside the ball joint is actually further, like the bevel is further out than a stock ball joint. And what that allows is more rotation front and back and then we can get more travel out of the front end of the car. Um, so that kind of goes over ball joints. And then of course, after 300 miles of the mint, the front brake pads were a little wore out. So we're gonna change those bad boys out. And at the same time, just you know, every part you see us changing right now is an empty product. And uh, this just kind of showcases the abuse we put them through without them breaking on us. What's up guys, I'm Pete, navigator of the 1103. Today we're going to go through kind of uh, the process we check our spindles. Um, sometimes you get micro fractures or um, stress cracks that you can't see with the naked eye. So we utilize a process called spot check. And that allows us to really tell if our spindles are in tip top shape or not. So one is a penetrant, one is a developer. You got to clean these spindles really good. There uh, occasionally will be some hairline cracking or micro fracturing around the snout base. And uh, we want to get that inside there and make sure that uh, we're not, you know, one uh, bad bump away from breaking our spindles. All right, so the penetrant's done its job. It's uh, been about 20, 30 minutes. Cleaned up the spindle with the brake cleaner and uh, just got it, you know, all the red off of it. So now we're gonna spray the developer and this is gonna show us if we have any micro fractures or hairline cracks and uh, let us know that our spindles are in good shape. So let's get some of this stuff sprayed on. What's up guys? So we let the penetrant uh, sit for about 20 minutes, cleaned it off with uh, brake cleaner, got the uh, red all off of the spindle. Then we sprayed the developer on there. So the developer is what's going to show you your micro fractures or your hairline cracks. 
spray that on same let it sit about five minutes or so and it'll flash off to where it's just a milky white and uh, take a look at it and uh, look and see if you have any kind of uh, you know obvious fractures it'll show you real thin red lines this one looks like it may actually right on the edge there be the start of a crack um, so when you see something like that you're gonna clean it and you're gonna check it a second time and we're gonna verify that uh, that indeed is gonna be an issue for us and it looks like it is so that's why we check them um, there's no telling how long this would last but uh, clearly the start of a significant crack right there right at the snout and uh, yeah we'll probably end up pulling these spindles so it's uh, good to know little quick tip when uh, you're pressing ball joints in and out first uh, what you want to do is take the boots actually off the ball joint there is a spiral clip that holds it on and you can work it around the boot to get it off and then just pop your boot up like that if you leave these on for removal of ball joint or installation it will tear the boot um, secondly you get your old ball joint out obviously using a press here you can see there's a couple pieces of steel here tubing whatever it takes to make something work and what most guys don't know when they're installing ball joints if you look at a German arm there's a timing mark punched into the arm so wherever the bevels are in the ball joint it doesn't matter which way that bevel needs to line up with the timing mark in the arm As you can tell, arms are back in. There should have been a little clip of how to get the arms in the beam. Uh, pried up, got the spindle in. This is a freshly welded uh, German spindle that Pete welded up for us. Um, I think uh, that's about it. Now we'll get a little clip of us uh, putting the rest of it back together. Backing plate back on, new brake shoes, and getting the drum back on. <laughs> obviously put back together um, in the previous clip you just seen we put the drums back on the car uh, rebuilt the front shocks check nitrogen those are all good to go at 200 psi you take a look under here we got our pro eagle jack locked in ready to go check some of our electrical make sure everything's working properly and uh, we should be ready to go for the first mole race 